Great day to have hedge fund manager David Berman of Durban Capital with us. He's one of the most respected voices on the American consumer, and he's up at EC with our retail reporter, Courtney Reagan. Court? That's right, Sue. Thank you so much for that. David, you know, when you were last with us in August, you talked about a paradigm shift. You said retail is weak, the consumer is not. You still believe that even after today's reports? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, that's what's so strange about and interesting about our times that we're living in right now, because this has never happened, I think, historically, where, you know, normally the, cause the retail Retail is weak. It means the consumer is weak, but that's not happening. At the moment, there's just a whole paradigm shift. People are spending in, in other areas, particularly in the internet, and uh, it looks like the, your consumer is weak because retail is very weak, but it's not. So consumers are spending elsewhere, and you pay particular attention to Samsung, Apple, and Amazon. Can you talk about your theory there? Well, what we do is we compile all the numbers for every retailer in America. So we've got all the numbers for you know from Home Depot down to Walmart, even supermarkets, and we include them all. And then we get the numbers from Apple and Samsung and eBay, and um, and we we've got to obviously take out the U.S. numbers and compare like with like, take out any foreign exchange. And what we found is that um, when we came on here in August, we found that if you get SAA, which is Samsung, Apple, and Amazon, if you get the total sales of all of those companies, and you compare it to the sales growth in America, it, it was 50 percent of the sales growth. This quarter, the last quarter that was just reported, it actually was down to about 43% of total sales growth. But that's without eBay. If you included eBay, it comes to about 50%. So, so half the growth uh, of, of sales in the United States is coming from essentially those three companies and maybe with eBay as well. So we're buying, but we're spending on our cell phone bills or we're using our tablets to shop. And well, that's part of the yeah, paradigm yeah. shift. Well, that's actually interesting that you mentioned that. We don't even include in that number the cost of using the cell phone. You know? oh, okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't include that cost. Oh. So, and that's even higher. It makes it even worse because, I mean, you think about how much it's, it's, you know, each person spends on their cell phone bill. Right. That's even a bigger number. So then you take even more from discretionary income. Oh, yeah, income. yeah. So that's exactly what's happening. So really, people are just spending right. in other ways. They're also spending more time on social media and things like that, which is taking away time from shopping in the mall. Um, well, the good malls are still doing well. The bad ones are really struggling. Right. So, David, do, do you own Apple, Samsung, and Amazon? Or, and are those your favorite stock picks, given the shift that apparently we're seeing with the consumer? Well, what we do is we, um, we, we, we like Apple. Uh, we like Apple. We think they've got to come up with a new, uh, a, a new cycle coming up, uh, um, uh, and we think that they are winners. And we love Amazon. We, we, it's hard to value Amazon. Everyone says, oh, it's so expensive. It's so... And really, to come up with a price for them is very really difficult. However, we right. love it. And we we do own it. And what I love about Amazon is that they are, they are not going away. This is not like uh, some technology company. This is like the, the new Walmart, the, the Walmart of our generation. And, uh, you know, they are just doing everything right. Their sales are growing much higher than the reported numbers look. Actually, the report numbers, I believe, are about 22, 23 percent sales growth. That includes offshore. It also um, doesn't include the third market, uh, uh, you know, they've got the, the third party sellers. If you include the third party sellers, that's as high as 33 percent sales growth. Yeah. On a big base, that's massive. David, Bob Pisani here. Good to see you again. Uh, I, I get your point about the consumer spending elsewhere, but what do you do with all of these other stocks, the apparel and department stores? I mean, Staples, TJX, uh, Cato, disappointing. These aren't company-specific. What do you do with those companies that are lowering their guidance because they're not seeing the necessary sales? You know, you, you, we're in a secular decline in retail. We really are. Uh, so few people seem to believe it. I mean, if you go and look at those companies you mentioned, most all of them bought back a ton of stock at a higher price. I mean, it's like the boards don't seem to understand what's actually going on. They also don't right. mention it too much on their conference calls that the Internet is really hurting them, possibly because they're worried they might get a low multiple. Um, in most cases, that's the issue. Not all cases. For example, Home Depot is, uh, you know, is, is sort of somewhat immune to that. But when you look at Urban Outfitters, that's also a different area. The whole apparel sector, we actually sent you guys a chart on inventories. But the apparel, um, the, the, the inventory in apparel at the end of last quarter was extremely high. Um, and, um, and, and, and because of that, a lot of the companies like TJ Maxx and, and, uh, and Urban are missing numbers. And the weather was a factor. There's no question weather was a factor. But it's not the only thing at all. I mean, the weather was taken into account by analysts. And picking up on your point about the inventories and the sales, what does it tell you about the teen and the missy retailers in particular? Well, what we found was the inventories across the entire American companies was fine. Okay, the long-term trend was fine, but that's because it was really good with the hard good guys like, you know, at, you know electronics and home improvement. But it was really bad. We dug deeper. It was really, really bad in the Missy, as you point out, in the teen sector. In the Missy and the teen sector, the inventories are way out of control. And so what that means, that's really bad for everybody in that group. And we think in the next week or two, you're going to be hearing from all of these retailers and teens and Missy. And you, uh, we think you're going to get, you know, again, we said this, you know, every two quarters ago, we're going to get horrible numbers again. Huh. 
And so just kind of to finish up, you had mentioned some companies you think are running well, many of them athletic names. Can you run through some yeah, of those? Yeah, there seems to be a nice cycle. People seem to be wanting to do a bit of athletics, and, you know, there's, a, there's always some Olympic coming up or some competition <laughs> coming up. Nike seems to be doing well. Um, but, you know, it's, it's hard to necessarily buy these companies because they're so expensive. I mean, the markets are taking into account that they're doing well. But companies like, uh, you know, that, that all have greater than 20% sales that are still doing very well. Would it be a new one would be Sketches that's doing very well. Um, another one would be, um, you know, everybody, uh, you know, loves Columbia Sportswear. Um, so uh, there are quite a few good names out there which, uh, which are still doing well. Cause is still doing well. Um, we'll see how long that is taking market share right. away from Coach, uh, as well as just doing well on its own. And, um, of course, Under Armour is one of the best. I mean, their sales growth is 36%, accelerated from up 26% a year ago. But, of course, their PE is high, right. but they're one of the winners as well. So there are winners. Um, if you'll notice, those winners, are, they're, they're more brand names that are not really True. sort of, you know, competing against the Internet. You, you've got, you, know, you want to buy Under Armour, you've got to buy Under Armour. It's not really, uh, you know, retail. Per se. Right, brand versus retail. Which Foot is Locker, for total example, has got a report, I think, this week, and they're one of the few that should do well. Yeah. Um, and Friday. they are a retailer. So we'll watch that yeah. one very closely. You've given us a lot of food for thought, a lot of things to chew Absolutely. on here as we go through the rest of this er retail earnings season. Thank you so Thank much, you, Courtney. David, and we'll talk to you soon, Bob. Thank you for me, having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back up.